first thing we have to look at is this. So this came with your PlayStation and you need to put it on. So first things first, right here, this actually rotates. So what you need to do is just rotate it this way. And you're gonna see this screw. So I wanna show you how to place this in two ways, horizontal and vertical. So let's start off with vertical since that's slightly harder than horizontal. And we're just gonna take this out. So again, what I did was just rotate this like so. You can see that it rotates and then it reveals this. So you can just take out this screw. So it's hidden right in there. So again, this is the screw that comes within this and you need it if you're gonna place your PlayStation vertical, you don't need it if it's gonna be horizontal. Obviously you guys can switch it around later on. But anyways, once you take that out, you need to lock this back like it was before. So there we go. And that's how it was before. All right, so once we have this ready, we're gonna go to the next step. Now the next step is your PlayStation. You're gonna notice on the bottom, there's gonna be this right here. With your nail, just take this out. So again, let me just zoom in a little bit more. And with my nail, I'm gonna attempt to go ahead and take this out. There we go. So see this little cap? This is what keeps this from being exposed. So basically this right here is where your screw's gonna go. So your screw's gonna go right in there if you're placing this vertical. Then we're gonna go to horizontal again. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this stand right here and your PlayStation 5. Now see this, where all these ports are at? That's your back. So the way that you're gonna have to place this is like so. You're gonna have to move this. The two matches there. So I just placed it so this matches like so. And then you're just gonna place your PlayStation on top. Let me just show you a little bit better. And this will snap in right there, kind of, kind of snap in. So you're gonna see that stand goes right in there. And on the bottom, that's where you're gonna place this so it doesn't come off easy. Well, it won't come off at all, actually, once we place this. So we're just gonna flip our PlayStation to the side and here comes the screw. We're gonna go ahead and screw it in. And here you go. You guys can see that the screw is right in there. It's all good. We are ready to just stand this up. So right now you're gonna notice that the stand looks like so. There's a bit of space here. This, there's nothing here. But on the back, you guys can see that this fits perfect. So again, this was if you wanted to place your base on the bottom. So if you wanna just make your PlayStation stand up like so. But if you wanna place it on the side, and we can do that too. So let's take out the screw. So see on the back, you're gonna place this screw back in there. Just keep it. Even if you think that you're never gonna use this, you're never gonna put your PlayStation vertical, just keep that just in case. You don't know what's gonna happen later on. And then just lock it up. There you go. So now it's nice and locked. So to place this with your PlayStation horizontal, it's actually extremely easy. We are just gonna place our PlayStation like so. And here's our stand. So you're gonna see that this matches up. Do you guys see the square, the X, the circle and all that? Yeah, that matches up with this, okay? So square, square will match up with these. Kind of just place it like this. And this actually does snap in a little bit. This time you don't have to worry about any screws. And there you go, you just snapped it in. So right now what you can do is just place your PlayStation like so, horizontal. So there's gonna be a little bit of space between the table wherever you're placing this and your PlayStation. So again, that's how it looks like if you're gonna place this horizontal. It's up to you, whatever makes sense to you, your space, if you have enough ventilation around your PlayStation, just make sure you place it, whatever, again, makes sense to you guys. Anyways, in my case, what I'm gonna do is place it standing up because that is what fits my whole setup better. So we're gonna start off with the whole ports and connecting everything up. So let's just do that. So here's my HDMI cable. These are the HDMI cables that came with my PlayStation. Here are the power cables. Again, these are the power cables that came with your PlayStation. And this is USB. So this is USB-C to USB. This will be to just charge your controller, sync it up. It's gonna help out. So we're gonna do that last. 
All right, so let's just get started with your power cable. So the way to hook this up is this end right here is gonna go to your PlayStation. And that's gonna be right at the bottom, so in the back of your PlayStation. That's where you're gonna see all the ports. Down here, you're gonna hook this up. So here we go, you just hook it up like so. This end will go to your nearest outlet. So let's just hook that up. So that was our power cable. The next thing would be your HDMI. So here we go, this is my HDMI cable. Now the HDMI cables that you get with your PlayStation are very important. And by the way, if you have a monitor or TV, just make sure it has enough resolution. So let's say you guys have a 1080 monitor or 1080 TV, you're not gonna get 4K quality on it. So you do need a good monitor or a good TV to get that 4K if you want 4K. That's just an example. But anyways, the good thing about this is that you can hook up any any one of these to your TV and any one of these to your PlayStation. It doesn't really matter which one goes where. So you're gonna notice on the top of my power cable, that's my HDMI. So we're just gonna hook this up here, like so. And that's what it looks like. So again, HDMI, this part, I'm gonna hook up to my TV. So on the back of my TV, I'm gonna have some HDMI ports, just like I have the one here in my PlayStation. And if you have a monitor, same thing. Just look for that HDMI port and then hook this up. Next up would be your controller. So this is for your controller. Sure, we could do it from here, but from the front, it's gonna make more sense. So let's just turn this around. And on the front, you're gonna see this USB. That's where we hook up this. So let's just hook it up right here. And to charge our control for our PlayStation 5, all you guys have to do is hook that up there and then this will go directly on the back. You guys will see that USB-C port, just hook it up there, and there you go. So that's how you guys can sync it up and charge it up, actually, if you haven't synced it yet. Obviously, this is a setup video, so we haven't synced it yet or even turned this on. But before we keep going with anything, I would do wanna mention on the bottom, here's your power. So this is my power button. It's almost not even noticeable. So this is in the front of my PlayStation. There's that power button on the bottom, and you just have to press it to power it on. And if you ever have to force shut it down, that would be the button to keep holding until it shuts down. I forgot on the back to mention that there's a Ethernet cable right there that we could plug in. That's if you have that. Most of you are just you're gonna use your Wi-Fi. So we're gonna set it up Wi-Fi wise, but you can use that. That will go directly to your router. It did not come with the PlayStation, so you would need your own Ethernet cable or LAN cable. All right guys, so I have two separate videos. One for brand new users. So if you're a beginner, you've never used PlayStation before, you need to make an account and all that stuff. I'm gonna show you that in this video. However, I do have another one where it shows you how to transfer your information from your old PlayStation to your new one. So that's a separate video on how to set this up. But anyways, let's just keep going. All right, so right now, everything's gonna take up on our monitor or TV. So let's get started with that. All right, guys, so to power on your PlayStation 5 for the first time, we're just going to tap there. So that's the button, the power button. You're supposed to see lights. So that's happening. And then in your monitor, you're going to see something right now. All right, so on your screen, you're going to see this. And right now, you have to do exactly what it tells you there. So all we have to do on controller is press this button, PlayStation button. Once we do so, we're going to see this on our screen. So in this case, we're just gonna choose English US. However, you guys can scroll through and see anything else. You can scroll through with your controller, just going up and down with your joysticks right here, or you just press X and there you go. We're just gonna turn on English. At this point, you can go on and select to continue with screen reader. So you can turn that on or off. What I'm gonna do is just continue on, that's fine. Right now you have to select your internet. So. My strongest connection, according to this, is this first option. And yeah, that's my Wi-Fi. If you guys want to set this up not using your Wi-Fi network, you can use an Ethernet cable, but you have to hook that up on your PlayStation. And that Ethernet cable will go from your PlayStation directly to your router. But anyways, I'm going to choose this because this is my Wi-Fi. Just put in your password. Once you're done putting your password, just select this, done. And again, we're selecting everything on a controller with the X. And from here, just press OK. Then it's gonna hook up. So you need internet to set this up, by the way. Once it connects up, you're gonna see this adjust display area. 
once again on your controller just press x for okay and you're gonna be pressing x everywhere anyways all right so at this point what you have to do is just using your arrows right here on your controller on the top right hand corner i mean left hand corner um you want to make this almost invisible you have to be able to see it but it should be almost invisible so for me almost invisible would be right there so i'm just gonna go on to next so once again you're supposed to see something here if it's just white you have to mess around with the brightness and how dark it is so i'm just pressing these two buttons to adjust that and let's just go down a little bit but it needs to be barely visible so right now it's barely visible for me i'm just gonna make it darker so you guys can see it in the camera but this is simple you're supposed to see now for me to make it barely visible well, that means I'm about here. So right now it's actually barely visible. So once again, you have to do the same thing. You're supposed to see this, but it has to be barely visible. So in my case right there, it's barely visible. Gonna go okay. All right, so this is something that most people use is this. Optimize experience. And that's because it's always gonna keep up with your latest updates. So let's say whichever game you guys play, will just update on its own. And most likely once you turn on your PlayStation and you go play, it's already updated. So you don't have to update anything yourself or wait for that update to happen. But that technically means your PlayStation's not fully turned off. It's actually turned on or else you wouldn't be able to do that. But the good thing also, it's, it's gonna charge your controller plus you can turn on remotely when you connect using PlayStation app or remote play. So that's the good thing about this, because your PlayStation is not totally turned off, not really, and that's why you can do all those things. Now, if you select the second option, low power, well, that's actually better. It's actually even better for your PlayStation's life because it's not always turned on. But then you have to apply updates yourself, and anytime you turn it on, you have to do that yourself. In my case, I don't like to waste electricity, so I'm gonna go on for this, but you guys can go on and choose this. Most people choose that for sure. And I do want to mention that there is another option right here, custom. So you can customize this. However, just to keep it simple, we're going to go into low power. Now, keep in mind that no matter if you guys choose this or this option, it doesn't matter. Your setup will be the same thing. So let's just go into this. We're going to scroll down into OK. Press OK. We're going to see this. Go with your controller with joystick to the right. Press on Agree. Go down. Press Confirm and then you're just gonna keep going. Right now, update system software. That's something that you're all gonna have. Continue on, do it right now. Do not just think, well, I'm gonna, I wanna play games, so I'm gonna skip this update, just update it. So we're gonna go on and press update, and then it's gonna begin the update. It's only a gig, fairly small. It depends on your internet speed how this goes, but just let it be, and once it's done, we can continue on. All right, what I forgot to mention is while we wait for this update to happen, and it tells you actually right here, create your account for PlayStation, something that you're going to have to do anyways. And you can get the PlayStation app for easier sign in. Sure. You don't have to do that. You can just go to this website right here or scan that QR code. That's going to take you to this website, which is PS5 set up on web. And that way you can create your account on PlayStation and you can get started faster. So we're going to do that right now, creating our PlayStation account. For that, you're going to have to go into this right here. Hold on, let me just copy and paste it and zoom in. So it's PlayStation.com, PS5, set up on web. Once you go into the website, you're going to see this. This Sony's official website. Just click on create account. So it's going to be right here. And then it's going to take you to this page. Just click on create account. You can select whichever region makes sense to you. So again, depends if you guys are in the US or anywhere else, just select whatever makes sense to you guys. Then on the bottom right hand side, you're gonna see next, just click there. From here, you just put in your birth name. Then on the bottom right hand side, you're gonna see next, just going to next. Now you're gonna to have to put in your email. So it can be anything, whether you guys have Gmail or any other one, you can go ahead and put it in here. So that's my email. I suggest creating a password that's really strong or semi-strong. This is not the best password, but that's my password right now. Just make sure they match up and then go right into next. Then you just have to fill up your city, state or province, and then post a code, then go into next. 
So again, just putting all your information, just going to next and your online ID. So here are suggestions. You don't have to pick any one of these. You can make your own and hopefully it's available. So we're just going to make an ID right now. We're going to call it tech and design and put in my first name and last name. So it's tech going to next. I would just leave everything on right now and just going to agree and create account on the bottom right hand side and your account is officially created. So just going to continue and you can go ahead and just update everything. So just go right into next. Then you're going to see all this stuff. Just confirm. Well, unless you guys don't want this, you can tick off those check marks. But I'm just going to leave it on confirm and we are done. So you can go into sign out and at this point you can go ahead and sign into your account because you already created an account. So just put in your email, go right into next. We're going to put in our awesome password, click on sign in. And then you're going to see this. You have to verify your email. This is very important. So right now, do not click on recent email unless you didn't get it. So that's down here below. If you didn't get it, go ahead and do that. But right now, don't do it. And you can go ahead and go into your email. You should be getting something like this. So it should say account registration confirmed. Okay, you can verify now but you're also going to see this other email verify that it's you same thing. We're going to click on the second one. Actually just click on verify. They're both from PlayStation. And right now it says my email has been verified. Click OK. And we are officially all done. We can just click on sign in on the top right hand corner of our screen. We're going to see sign in and we're done. We're already signed in. I know it's kind of silly. I have to put in sign in so many times, but on the top right hand corner, I do have to mention this. See this? This is you. So if you click on it, you're going to see this account settings, payment, everything right here. Subscription management, everything to do with your accounts right here. You can go into account settings just to make sure you're all OK. But as far as creating an account for PlayStation, you're all done. So go ahead and enjoy your PlayStation account. You can use this for any PlayStation for that matter. I also want to mention you will get a message saying that your PlayStation is going to restart. Then you're going to get a just a black screen. Don't worry about it. Your PlayStation is turning off and turning on back again after the update's done. All right, guys. So after your PlayStation has been updated, you already created your account online. You can go ahead and press this button on right here, your controller. So we're going to do that. And then you're going to see this. So right now we can sign in using the account that we just created. If you haven't created one, this would be the time to do so. But again, we already created one, so we don't need to click there. It's much easier to just create this on your phone or tablet or computer. But anyways, on the top, just put in your email and then your password down here below. All right, guys, I want to make a note that if you make a mistake on your password or anywhere, really, you can press square to delete and go back. And then once you're done, just press done. Going to sign in. And here we go. We're just going to see, please wait. By the way, the fans that you guys hear in the background, it's just my computer. It's not my PlayStation. So your PlayStation, you shouldn't be able to hear any fans going right now, just in case. Anyways, we're going to go right into next. And then from here, you just put in your first name and your last name. Once you're done putting your first name, last name, scroll down. You're going to see receive emails, notifications. You can turn this off or on. It's up to you. We're just going to leave it as is and then go right into next. All right, guys, so this part is really up to you. How much privacy do you want or not? Social and open, well, that's just showing everybody everything, well, almost everything about you online. And then team player, in the other hand, it's just limiting a little bit. Then from here, friend focused, just your friends, most of the stuff, solo and focused. Well, that will keep things a little bit more private, and of course, you can go to the last option, review your current settings. At this point, we're just going to keep things open. So we're going to select that one. Then from here, just click on apply, confirm and continue on. You just have to please wait. So this part is if you don't want anybody else to use your PlayStation, you could put a login passcode. Passcode is just four digits. Very easy. So you can log in really quick. However, if you just want to play, your, it's just you that's going to play your PlayStation or you don't mind others using your PlayStation, I wouldn't put a passcode. So we're going to skip that. And right here, you guys can also see this. Require password at checkout. This, on the other hand, I would suggest turning on just in case. So if somebody uses your PlayStation and they make a purchase by mistake, 
they won't be able to because they need a password. So again, it's really up to you. If you're just going to use this, then you don't need to worry about that stuff. Just going to OK. Then we're going to see please wait again. And this part's actually pretty important. So you can go by text message or the app. If you guys want to make this easy, just go for text messages. But you could do this within an app and it can be on your iPad, for example, or any tablet that you guys have, any phone. So that's if maybe you don't have a phone number or you don't want to give a phone number. You can just go into this app and go ahead and do that. So just to keep things simple, we're just going to go into the app. All right, guys. So there's an app that's called this right here, Authenticator. So you guys can use that. I'm going to tap on it. So once you open up the app, you're going to see this. Just click on add account. Then you can go on add account. It tells you personal account, work, whatever. Just go into personal account. Once you do that, you can go into scan QR code, press OK. And we're going to scan that QR code. So right now, here is the code that it's giving me. And I just have to put that in right there. Now, the bad thing and the only bad thing about these apps is that you have to put in the code really fast. And it's going to keep giving you codes and codes until you can actually catch up with one. So hopefully with the next code, you guys can do it. So right now you do have to take a picture of this and then just press. I recorded these backup codes for future use. Press done. And then right here, you do have to add your mobile number. So you can choose any country. So depending on what country you guys are from, then put in your phone number or you can actually skip this and do this later. So again, we did the app because we didn't really want to use our phone number right now. We are in fact going to skip this because we're going to assume you guys don't have a phone number or just want to add it later on. So we can do this later. I'm going to say, please wait, family and PlayStation. OK, then we can go on into the next thing. All right. You can download all these apps right now. If you're not interested, don't do it. So I'm going to uncheck all of them because I actually don't want any of these, but just leave a check mark on the ones that you do want in your PlayStation. They are going to take some space up, but not that much. So you can press on download if you wanted to download anything. Or you can do this later, just like me. And then just keep going with the setup. Now those apps are very common and that's why you get those at the start. So your PlayStation is just going to download right away. If uh, you press skip for now, like me, you can download them later on. It's not a problem. So right now it's going to ask me, what am I? Yeah, that's me. Click on this sign and I can go ahead and update. Never, never press update later. Always update right away. So that's your option on the right hand side. Then it's just going to update your controller. So right now it's actually updating. Now your controller light should be blue like so while it updates. And it's going to be fairly fast because updates for your controller are actually pretty, pretty small. They don't take up too much space and it's almost done. Never unplug, by the way. So my PlayStation controller, I always had it hooked up to my PlayStation the whole time. Do not unhook it. But technically right now, we are in fact all done with the setup. You can go to your PlayStation store, buy all the games that you want. You can go to the last option up here, PlayStation Plus, which gives you a bunch of subscriptions that you can do. Well, there's three. There's premium, extra, and essentials. Depends what you guys like. If you guys want to play a bunch of games monthly, then this is pretty good. What I do is going to essentials just because some games require you to have PS plus to play online, such as GTA, but you don't need PlayStation plus by the way. However, in PlayStation store, you will want to go there to get started looking for some games and downloading everything that you could ever want. So here's a bunch of games that you could download. There's free games such as Fortnite and a bunch of others. But as far as this video goes, we are all done with the setup. Congratulations. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.